Remember, this is the CXC, CSEC chemistry paper two from May, June, 2023. We're zooming in on question two. Okay, number two, part one of A, or A, at atmospheric pressure, water exists in three states of matter, while carbon dioxide exists in only two states. One, List the three states of matter in which water can exist. And this is for, for one mark. And as usual, we're thankful for small mercies. So those three states that water can exist in at atmospheric pressure would be solid, liquid, and gas. Then they want us to describe the energy of the particles in each of the three states listed in part one of A above. So let's go with in the solid state. So in the solid state, the energy that we're describing here is the kinetic energy that the particles would have as a result of their motion. So in a solid, the particles are arranged in a fixed way held by very strong forces of attraction. So they have nowhere um, to move to. They can only vibrate. So in a solid, um, there is very little. There is little, very little to no kinetic energy. All right. In a liquid, we could say there is a moderate amount. And then in a gas, the forces of attraction are very, it's almost non-existent. So these particles can move in any direction all about the place with a large amount of space between them. So we say that there's large or enormous amount of kinetic energy present. Part three, name the process which occurs when carbon dioxide changes from one state to another. We have to appreciate the two states that it's in first. It can be in the solid state. It can be in the gaseous state. So that would be sublimation. Part four, describe how the arrangement of the carbon dioxide particles chain changes, yes, as carbon dioxide undergoes the process named in the A3 above. So it's sublimation. We'd have to decide which state we're moving from, whether we're going from the gas to the solid or the solid to the gas. All right. So we're going to start with the gas here. So let's just describe what happens first when we're in the gaseous state. Well, let's describe what happens first when we're in the, in the solid state and then as we move from the solid to the gaseous state. Heat would have to be applied. So let's go. All right, so we could mention here that it actually skips or they skip the liquid phase. So in the solid state, the particles in dry ice are very close to each other in a regular, in a regular way. As heat is added or as heat is applied, the particles begin to vibrate and quickly move into the state where they have large amounts of space between them. That's into the into the gaseous state. So that is the gaseous state and here they want us to use appropriate diagrams to illustrate the lattice structure of sodium chloride crystals and the giant molecular structure of diamond i i believe there's a there's a neater way to do it than i'm doing it right now As always, so this is not technical drawing. We just want to show, we just want to be able to draw 
something that looks like a square. Then we get to our parallel line so we can get it to look like a cube. Then we can take it from there. All right, so we're going to look at the lines at the back, which are going down. Well, that one that will join that. It's not a perfect cube, but we can actually work with this. So, all right, so in this one, I'm going to put chloride at each vertex, or what we call a corner. So, chlorides at the ver. TCs. So I'm using the big one to represent chloride. So we have alternating chloride and sodium. So this would be, let's do the key. So this is chloride ion. And then this little one will be the sodium ion, Na plus ion. So sodium would be here. Sodium would be here as well. Sodium here, sodium here. And in the middle, there would be a chloride and would draw a line to show that there, there's, you know, electrostatic attraction between them. There's the bond right there, the ionic bond. All right, so sodium would be here, here as well, here. Chloride would be here. And we could have put sodium at each vertex. What's important to note is that each chloride ion is surrounded by six sodium ion and each sodium ion is surrounded by six chloride ion which, whichever way we sample all right so let's um continue so here we have a sodium 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 chloride sodium would be here sodium would be here uh chloride would be there at the back we can line that up much better. All right, so line would be coming down through there. One would be going across there. There's a chloride at the, that one at the back, line coming down, line going across. It probably should be blowing your mind now. There is a chloride at the front. I didn't focus on the front one. Sodium right there, and then there's one more. Sodium would be in the middle, a small one. And then from the top going through at the bottom. So that should give us our full mark. Then it, a much simpler one for diamond, we're gonna use carbon and we're going to show that one carbon is bonded to four more. So this is our carbon in the center. So each C represents a carbon atom. And the line here represents a strong, or we don't have to say strong, we could say a covalent bond. So that would give us three marks each, and that would make it six. So we're down to the last two in number two to make it up to 15. We have 13 so far. Part C, in solution, two metals, A and B, form A plus and B2 plus ions respectively. So it means the A forms A plus and B forms B2 plus. Metal A displaces Fe from a solution containing Fe2 plus ions, but metal B does not. Write a balanced ionic equation to show the reaction between metal A and Fe2 plus. All right, kind of expecting something more like a reactivity series based on this, but this is where they stop it. So we'll just take it and be thankful for small mercies again. So, all right. So A is going to displace Fe2 plus. A is, in, is being treated as something in group one. It has a valency of one, so it will be, it will be A. And A here would be a solid. Fe2 plus would be an aqueous medium. And 
from this, we would end up with a plus plus Fe solid. But each time for every atom or every mole of A that reacts, we get one mole of A plus or we get one mole of electrons actually being liberated. For each mole of the Fe2 plus, we need two moles of electrons. So it means then, even though we're not seeing the electrons, we'd actually, we'd actually have, this is what we have happening. A is actually reacting to give A plus plus an electron. All right, and then on, so that is um, oxidation, right? And then on the other side, now we have Fe2 plus actually gaining two electrons to be liberated as Fe, the solid. So if we have two electrons on the left hand side, we would need two electrons on the right hand side. So to get that, we would need two electrons, but we can't go in and multiply the electrons by two without multiplying the A plus by two. And anything we do to one side, we have to do it to the other side. So we'd end up with that. Then we remove the electrons and then we write back what we have. So we would need 2A right here. And we would need 2A plus, and that would do it. And this would give us the additional two marks to make it up to 15. How many have you gotten so far? And just like that, we've come to the end of today's session. Remember to like, share, and consider subscribing if you haven't done so. Check out all the other content, material that we have on this channel to serve you. We hope you find value. Couple later.